Welcome to this Necron Monolith comparison video where I share my newly painted new Necron Monolith and compare it to the old one. I'm going to talk about the build, the painting and the magnetization of this monolith and how I think it's worth every penny. <gasps> it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video and if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about Necrons and more then please subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Okay so first of all Happy New Year to all of you I really hope you had a great time. Now at the end of 2020 I was able to finish painting my new Necron monolith and today we're having a very close look at it comparing it also to the old model. Now in the intro and in the title I said I think the miniature is worth every penny so let's look at that first. Now obviously I'm not talking about value for money in terms of what the model actually does on the table because I think there's no one here that can argue that the cost of this model is not worth the rules of the model. However from an actual model point of view this model is awesome and I can tell you I think it's worth every penny. If you compare the price of the new monolith so say the Catan, the Void Dragon where you have just one sprue this monolith has six sprues in it and comparing it to let's say the Necron Vault where you have where basically one sprue duplicated four times this monolith has an array of different sprues and you get some big pieces of plastic the detail, the design is awesome it's a lot of fun to paint it's a lot of fun to build of which you have to paint it before you build it or at least most of it and I have to say I really enjoyed it and for me it was worth every penny. And to be fair regardless of the rules I also do think that it was worth the money because I am going to play this monolith and I'm going to have a lot of fun playing this monolith. Indeed I want to play this monolith and my two old monoliths all in one list so keep an eye out for that. I'm waiting for lockdown restrictions to reduce so that I can actually start playing games. Anyway, today it's all about the actual model, having a close look at it, comparing it to the old one. So let's go table down and have a look. Okay, so here we go. Here is my brand new, super cool, newly painted monolith. I'm going to run through what I did for the painting first, and then we're going to have a look at my magnetized sections. And then we're going to compare it with the old monolith. So like I said, I had to paint this in sub-assembly, which was actually more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be. It was really cool just putting this together after painting. Now, first of all, I started with the metal. I primed the miniature black, and then I used my usual painting technique for my Necrons, which I've made tutorials on in the past, linked in the description, of course. So I dry brushed it with Ironbreaker, and then I dry brushed it over the top with Lead Boucher. That gave me this really cool metal finish. It looks a little bit worn and old, and also I don't have to wash it because all of the recesses are black from the black primer. I then went to work on the black stone, again using dry brush techniques, and I actually made a full tutorial on painting black stone, so I'll link you up to that video in the description if you're interested in that. I then went in and did the green, starting with a base coat of Caliban green on the Gauss weapon areas. That includes the sections down the side of the monolith, which to me look like Gauss weapons. The rest of the green I base coated in Warpstone Glow. That includes the golf ball, the orb at the top. I then painted Mute Green on the weapons, building up that nice bright colour. I wanted it to look like green rods, which is how I do all of my Gauss weapons in my army now. I then used the same colour, Mute Green, to paint the orbs on the inside of the monolith there. I then got my dry brush with that Mute Green, and I dry brushed over the energy effects below the golf ball and the actual golf ball itself. 
I then went one step further using Nurgling Green and dry brushed that over the golf ball and the energy effects. Now I also used those colours and the dry brush technique on the portals just to give me that glowing green effect on the energy streaks. As I said, nothing too special in painting this, it's just basic techniques, but done well, looks pretty cool. I then went in and I painted the areas that I wanted black with black paint, and then I dry brushed that over very gently with lead belcher just to give me a few highlights. Finally, on the Gauss weapons, I did a little line of silver around one of the little rims. My original Gauss weapons have that at the front of the guns, but these guns don't have a front like that, so I had to put it at the back. However, it works pretty well. And then finally, to finish it off, I painted gold and some of the Necron symbols, just adding a little bit of depth to the miniature. I also painted a little bit of gold on the Canoptic creature on the back of the monolith, so each side of this monolith has a touch of gold just to break it up. Now of course one of the big differences between the old monolith and the new one is the fact that we've got a choice of two weapons and of course I've magnetised my weapons. Now I made a full tutorial on how to do that so if you're interested in how to do it yourself I'll link you up to that tutorial in the description below but nice and easy the weapons come on and off. Now the good thing about this model is you actually get two different portal options, one with the warrior coming out of it and one without. Now I couldn't work out which one I liked the best so I ended up painting both. It wasn't until I actually glued the miniature together after painting that I realised that the portal doesn't actually sort of sit in the monolith too much. I thought it was going to be gluing into the sides of the monolith and it would be very difficult to interchange it. However, it only pushes in on two little slots at the back and indeed it pushes in so well that you don't even have to magnetise it. However, you do just get one set of steps and the steps don't just push into place, they have to be glued into place. So what I decided to do was just magnetise the steps. So I drilled a two millimetre hole up into both sides of the portal and down into the steps. Then I just magnetised them on. So I now have both portal options, which is really, really cool. Now talking of options, if you didn't glue the cryptic creature onto the back here and you actually took that whole back section out, you could potentially put the other portal on the other side of the monolith. However, of course, you wouldn't have the second uh, set of steps, but potentially you could use that as a conversion if you didn't like the canoptic creature. Now, talking of the canoptic creature, some of you may be thinking, hey Nick, what do you think of this model now that you've painted it? Because in your previous videos, you said you didn't like the orb, the golf ball, and you also didn't like the canoptic creature. Okay, so here are my opinions now. Uh, the golf ball. I actually quite like the golf ball now. It's not as golf ball looking as I thought it was from the, the pictures. And after painting it and having a model without the green rods, I think actually it, it works really well. It's pretty cool to be honest with you. Now, of course, I know a lot of people like this canoptic creature. It's potentially the way forward for Necrons. I mean, our Tesseract Vault has canoptic creatures on it. However, those creatures are embedded into the armour. They're not controlling the vehicle, as in, like this one is, sort of in the air, doing it, whatever it's doing to that energy ball, maybe harnessing the energy or something. Now I did have the option of course not to put it on there, however the towel is embedded in the miniature, it doesn't come off, and whilst I could have converted and adapted it maybe without the canoptic creature, well to be honest with you I wanted to build it as is straight out of the box, really, so I could make this video and we could have a closer look as, at the miniature as it's supposed to be. To be fair I can take it or leave it, the canoptic creature doesn't really do anything for me, I don't wow about it being on there. I think it's a little bit odd. I mean, if this energy ball wants to shoot backwards, it's going to shoot the canoptic creature. Really weird. However, we'll talk more about that when we look at the old miniature. 
Now this new monolith now has a base, which the old one didn't. And there's a pretty cool mechanism for the base. You don't even have to glue it, it just pushes into place. Actually, it's got two points. You can either have it horizontal or you could twist it around and then you could have it skew if to one side as if it's, well, not quite sure what it's doing. I don't particularly like that, but some people may like it, so it is certainly an option, and options are always good. Okay, so here we go, the old monolith versus the new monolith. Let's compare these two units. Now, when we first saw images of the new monolith, I think we all thought it was going to be a much bigger miniature. However, it's almost exactly the same size. There really isn't much difference between them. The bottom horizontal edge of the monolith is six inches, six inches all round, and then it's got a height of around eight inches. Actually, the old monolith stands about a millimeter taller than the new one. However, the old one doesn't have a base. And I'm going to base my old monolith, so that's going to raise it up probably about five or six millimeters taller than the new one. Now looking at these miniatures here side by side, the old miniature does look a little bit bigger, but I think that's an optical illusion because they are the same size. The new miniature has a little bit more depth to it. It's not so blocky, which I think gives the impression that it's a bit bigger. It's also got that big arc going over the top of the old monolith, but the new one doesn't have that. It's got the canoptic creature there instead, but it's a little bit lower. Now, if I change to this angle here, where I've got one model behind the other, you can see that they are pretty much exactly the same size. Then as I move the old model out and just change the positions, again, you can see these things are basically exactly the same size bar, a couple of millimeters on the height. Now, it is quite interesting the direction that Games Workshop went with this miniature, considering they put a lot of effort into making a new version of this classic model. They've made it exactly the same size, and they've made it very expensive. There's not too many reasons for you to say, well, I'm just gonna ditch my old monoliths and buy the new ones, except the fact that it looks, you know, really awesome. They have attempted to try to upgrade you to the new miniature by giving you a different gun option and making that the, the better option. But apart from that, all they've really done is taken the original design miniature and just massively upgraded it from every angle. But they've stuck to their guns, they've stuck to the classic design, which is what I really like about this miniature, the fact that everything from the original miniature is pretty much there, except of course for the green rods, which we know they're going away from the green plastic anyway. So looking at the front of the miniature, of course we've got the portal and we've got two portal options. Pretty cool. We've got the Necron symbol and the Necron symbol's there on the new miniature. I did like the sort of Necron face on the symbol. I liked the door. Actually, it's one of my favorite things about the old miniature. I would have liked to have seen that skull idea on the new miniature and I would have painted it white to match my miniatures, but you know, you can't have everything. And of course the introduction of the black stone in the miniature and how they've done that, giving you the depth and like I've previously said, the fact that you can see inside of this monstrosity and of course when painted just looks really, really cool. And of course I like how they've replaced the black stone on those two little sections at the top there where previously of course they were green rods. A really nice touch. We've got so the new power generator there which of course is powering this tank and of course Right on the top there, a replacement crystal. We've now got this golf ball design, which that golf ball, now is painted, looks pretty cool. And then we turn it on its side and we've got those big plastic green rods, which I really like, now replaced by those, well, I'm calling them the Gauss rods. Yeah, I mean, it works, it works well. The addition of those Necron symbols down the side, of course, giving it a lot more depth. And of course, we've got the more damaged metal look on the miniature, which when I first saw the pictures of that, I thought it was more weathered, more damaged than it actually is. When painted, you can't really tell that it's that damaged. However, in this side view, we can clearly see the canoptic creature there. 
is the replacement for that big arc going over the top. But of course the creature isn't going over the top, to, so to compensate for that they've increased the height of those three side spines. And then when you look at the back of the miniature, again, it's pretty much the same design. You can see the Games Workshop have said, right, this is the original. How are we going to change that section? At the back there, we originally had that little green circle, the green rod, and that's now replaced by an orb. And of course, they've got that big spine on the original, which is, let's face it, totally detailless. And they've replaced it with a very detailed canoptic creature. You can see you know, where they're coming from with that creature there. And of course, it's an aesthetic thing, probably. I think that's how it started as an aesthetic thing. And then somebody said, oh, how about if we say that that creature is controlling the golf ball? Maybe, I mean, that's, that's my thoughts. However, it was an absolute delight to build and paint this miniature. And the fact that you can literally see inside the miniature how it goes together is very, very clever. None of the sides actually sort of fit together. They're all suspended from the inside. Super, super cool. Now, what I liked about the old monolith is the fact that you could bring the steps up at the bottom of the monolith, and then you could draw the door down when you weren't teleporting units through. The new one doesn't have that. However, we've got a portal with the warrior in and a portal without the warrior in. Very, very cool. And of course, we've got two weapon options, which once magnetized is very, very useful. And lastly, we can, if we wish, have this miniature angled on its base. Another cool feature. As I said, I've had a lot of pleasure from this miniature, literally just from building and painting it, let alone playing it. Now, when we finally come out of the lockdown that we're in at the moment and we can start gaming, I am going to be gaming with this monolith in a battle report sometime in the future. So keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, if you want to see me unbox this miniature so you can see what it looks like on the sprue, then here is the video to that. And here is the playlist with all of my 9th edition Necron Codex review videos.